Hey everybody, this is Dave Duckdale learning video.com. So I'm comparing these four cameras again, the A7S2, FS5, C100, Red Scarlet Dragon. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna show you kind of my methodology of how I graded these, um, because these are all becoming like a log footage and I've graded them. And then what I wanna do after that is take a look at the river. So we're kind of comparing, you know, we when we, exposed all these, we exposed all these exactly the same in terms of the white and a gray patch. And then what I've done here in post is try to get these to match up the same as well, make sure that the highlights aren't clipping, and then just kind of take a look at the uh, dynamic range from, I guess, middle gray all the way up to the super whites and see how much dynamic range we've got to play with for all four cameras. And so let's take a look at my methodology. Um, so like I said before, here's uh, S-Log2 before, after, before, after. And what I'll do is we'll step through each node. So here's the first one, just kind of a primary grade, get things color corrected in terms of the white and gray. Here's one internally, just on the inside of me. And let me show you exactly what's going on here. If I actually turn on, if I go here, you can see there's, and I hit play, you actually see I've tracked these points um, to move with me. Um, so let's go ahead and get out of that layer. And then what I did here is I brought the exposure down in the background. And I didn't like the skin tones that perfectly, so I added a fourth note on this one. And I just added a little bit of skin tone correction to make it a little bit more like the C100, which looks pretty darn good in terms of the skin tones. So that is what I've done pretty much for all of them. So let's go and I'm gonna play a few seconds of this uh, one for you. All right, next up is the FS5. I did, kind of did the same thing again. Um, let's go ahead and we'll see before, that's S-Log2, after, before, after. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at each node. Here's the primary, here's the inside node, and there's the outside node, bringing the exposure down. I thought the skin tones look pretty good, so I didn't make any uh, an additional node for that one. And then what I want you to notice too is after I finish grading, you'll see that the white patch where my cursor is right here is between these two lines. And then this one, the gray patch is sitting right at the 384 line. And if you look back here, you can see they're exactly the same. And the C100, exactly the same. And the um, Red Scarlet Dragon, they're exactly the same. So. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go back to the um, FS5. Let's play a few seconds of this one. Sorry for all that camera shake. All right, the next one up is the C100. So let's go ahead and look at C-Log. Before, after, before, and after. So let's take a look at each node. Primary, inside node, outside node with lower exposure. And the final one, this is the Red Scarlet. So go before, whoa. <laughs> I wanna say one thing right now, I probably shouldn't even include this one because I don't know how to process the raw information in Resolve. I've gone into you know the, the part down here that you can't see and I've gone through the, the metadata and tried to change a few things, but I am no expert on red, so probably shouldn't include it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. You guys can comment all you like. <laughs> Um, so here we go. Uh, let's go before. And this was uh, just kind of a primary node. Here's your inside node. And there's the outside node. So I think I did a pretty good job of correcting all that nasty green cast that was inside from whatever it was. Because we actually used a, I believe they used an NDIR, IRND from Tiffin. Should get rid of that, all that IR pollution on the Dragon sensor, which I don't think you have to worry about like on the Sony cameras. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play through all of them again. Um, but now what I want you to do is take your eye and put it on the river. Again, we when we were doing these, we put each one in to the Shogun and we looked at the white and gray patches close up to the camera to make sure that all of them were recording the exact same patches the exact same way. And we set the white to be a certain level. I think it was actually 60 IRE for the white. And so we're going from 60 all the way up, I guess, into the super whites on how it handles this river, because we knew this river would blow out at some point. As you can see over here where my cursor is, 
it's definitely blowing out over here, but it's retaining the information pretty well over here on the A7S II. So let's go ahead and take a look and just keep your eye on the river. And as you can see with the movement, you know, we do have some blown out highlights on the left. And then we go take a look at the FS5. I was really surprised on this one. Let me stop it for a second. Let me show you what I've done here, just so you know. And I'm gonna take the gain and bring it down slightly. And you see what I did right there? That is the clipping point. There was more information above it. I just brought it all down from where it was originally. See, see how it was all the way up here on the uh, waveform monitor? I brought it all down just below clipping, so just so you know. But I was really surprised that the FS5, going from that white IRE at IRE 60 to all these super whites, it almost, you know, to me it looks like there's more information on the uh, A7S II than there is on this camera, which really kind of surprised me. Again, could be doing it wrong, but that's just my observation. So let's go ahead and continue playing this one out. All right, next up is the C100. And as you can see, man, it's totally blown out. Now this is an older camera. Um, so maybe that's why the Canon hasn't updated this sensor, or they have actually since the C100 Mark I. Now it's a C100 Mark II. So now, again, I almost don't even want to include the Red Dragon Scarlet um, because I don't know how to process it. So just kind of disregard that one. So now let's go through them again. And this time we're just gonna look at skin tones. Uh, so just look at my face. Look at my face. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. Yeah, doing these tests on myself is kind of odd. I was like, well, all three of us were there and I was like, all right, who wants to be the guinea pig? And they're like, uh, you can do it. I'm like, all right, I'll do it uh, for these tests. So there's the FS5. There's the C100, which probably has the best skin tones. Although, I don't know, to me, it almost looks like I've got a little green in my face. Maybe I didn't color correct that perfectly. And the last one is the Red Scarlet Dragon. Um, so that's pretty much it for the test I thought I would just share. I'm just kind of surprised um, in terms of skin tones. I know some people were in that last video I did were complaining that the skin tones looked really nasty on the A7S II compared to like the C100. But I don't know, I think in terms of the way I corrected it, I think, you know, this is C100, this is the A7S II, here's your C100, A7S II, I think it looks pretty good, um, pretty comparable. I thought these, this one a little bit maybe more magenta or reddish, I don't know well, what to call this, the skin tone. And the red scarlet, I guess, almost want to take this out of the equation because I don't know how to process this information with the red, uh, the raw file. So that's pretty much it. Um, I could have done this video in such a way where I didn't say anything. I just hit play and I put text down in the lower left hand corner saying which camera it was and let you draw your own conclusion. But you know, my site is called learningvideo.com. So I'm in the process of learning. I'm always learning. And I think if you say you are you know exactly what's going on and you say you know everything and you're not learning, well, um, good luck to you because <laughs> this is a heavy tech industry. Sensors change, computers change, uh, log curves change, the way you process the information changes. So if you're one of those people that didn't like my first test, eh, that's fine. Um, and you know, that first test I did with these four cameras, I'll admit I put too many variables into the equation. This test, pretty much I'm showing you what it looks like um, in terms of from white IRE 60 to the super whites in the river. Um, and that's all this test is really about is my interpretation. This is just, I'm just sharing what I'm learning. Um, and if anybody else there wants to share their information, that'd be great. I haven't seen many of these type of tests before between these different cameras. So um, that's pretty much it. And I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye.